Good day everyone, I am Kayleen Polinar from the group 3 and our case presentation for today is all about the uterine rupture. Uterine rupture is rare but serious pregnancy complication which causes the uterine wall to tear so the baby slips into the mother's abdomen. It can cause severe bleeding in the mother and can suffocate the baby. Uterine rupture usually occurs at the site of a previous C-section incision. The result of the rupture leaves the baby in a very dangerous condition. It is because the baby is now exposed to the bacteria found inside the mother's abdomen, and the baby's blood supply from the placenta has been disrupted. On the other hand, the mother loses a significant amount of blood from the turn uterus, lowering her blood pressure and further decreasing the amount of oxygen delivered to the baby. This condition affects less than 1% of pregnant women or that is 1 in 20,000 pregnancies. Uterine rupture is a major contributor to maternal morbidity and neonatal mortality, thus making this study relevant as this study will include nursing interventions that can be done as well as awareness for the signs and symptoms of the uterine rupture. Hello, good day. My name is Minami Pakibat and I'm going to discuss about our patient's profile. Our patient name is Sheila May Gonzalez, a 40 years old, female and married. She lives in Tulang, Hetafi, Bohol and was born on November 5, 1982. She is a Roman Catholic and a Filipino. She's a she's also a teacher. The date and time of admission is in February 22, 2023 at exactly 10:25 a.m. Her final diagnosis having a um, uterine rupture. Chief complaint she reported having a persistent headache and a white spot in her vision that appeared to be floating. And about her vital signs, her temperature is 36.8 degrees Celsius, her blood pressure is 126 over 67, her pulse rate is 78 beats per minute, her respiratory rate is 19 breaths per minute, her autostat is 98%, her height is 5'3", and her weight is 56 kg. And about her family history, high blood pressure on her father's side. Her past history, the patient had a previous diagnosis of preeclampsia without severe features prior to presentation. The patient had a previous cesarean delivery on her fourth baby. And her present history, on February 22, 2023, the patient was admitted at GMPH and was diagnosed with having uterine rupture. The risks and benefits of cesarean delivery were discussed with a patient who agreed to attempt at ECB. The, patient, the ECB was performed successfully. Her treatment, present treatment is immediate laparotomy with cesarean delivery. And that's all. Thank you. Good day everyone, I am Rodilyn Morales and today I will discuss the anatomy and the physiology of uterine ruptures. So, the uterus is the female reproductive organ that is responsible for many functions in the processes of implantations, gestations, menstruations, and the labor. The wall of the uterus contains a hormone responsive membrane lining. The uterine, uterine wall is composed of three distinct muscle layers the endometrium, the meometrium, and the perimetrium. The endometrium is the innermost layer, which is a hormone responsive layer that changes its thickness according to signals released from the brain and the ovaries in the form of hormones. The endometrium Thickens upon the release of hormones, just such as estrogens. The endometrium contains also glandular cells that are responsible for releasing substances 
such as enzymes and growth factors in the uterine lumen. The endometrium is a further separated into distinct sections, the functional layer and the basal layer. The meometrium is the middle layer of uterine wall which is composed of a thick smooth muscle layer. It has a similar structures to other smooth muscles found in the human body, with actin and myosin being the most predominant proteins. The thickness of the myometrium range between 2 and 3 centimeters. The outermost layer of the uterine lining is referred to as perimetrium. The perimetrium is the classified as a serous layer, meaning that is layers contain cells that release fluids that provide lubrication to avoid friction. In this case, the perimetrium releases fluids to avoid friction with the pelvis and peritin peritoneum. The perimetrium is also a part of a peritoneum, which covers other organs found in the pelvic region. The uterus is composed four main structures. First is the fundus. The fundus is the upper most region of the uterus. It is curved and connects to the fallopian tubes, the body, corp the body or the corpus. The main structures of the uterus is extend from the fundus to the portion of the uterus where it begins to narrow into the vagina. It is where most uterine function take place the and the third is the acid most the low neck region of the uterus and the last is the cervix which is the lowest lowest region of the uterus that connects to the vagina uterus support extra structure the round ligaments connects the uterus to the abdominal wall and includes the artery of suction. The broad ligaments connect the lateral portion of the uterus with the fallopian tube and ovary. The uterine artery, cardinal arteries, and uter ureter travel within the broad ligament. The ovarian ligaments connect the ovary to the lateral surface of the uterus. The infundibuli pelvic or the ipial ligaments connect the ovary to the abdominal wall within the IP ligaments are the ovarian artery and the vein the uterine vasculator the uterine artery is the main blood supply to the uterus with some collateral supply from the ovarian artery and the last is uterine innervation the uterus is innervated sympathically and parasympathically through the hypogastric nerve and pelvic splenic nerves, respectively. And that's all, and thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Kailin Pulinar, and today I am tasked to discuss all about the pathophysiology of uterine rupture. Uterine rupture is a serious pregnancy complication where the wall of the uterus suddenly tears open. In a severe uterine rupture, the tear goes through all the three layers of the uterus, the endometrium, myometrium, and perimetrium. Uterine rupture can allow a part of the fetus, a mudic fluid, or the umbilical cord to enter the peritoneal cavity or the broad ligament. During labor, pressure builds as the baby moves through the mother's birth canal. This pressure can cause the mother's uterus to tear. Often, it tears along the site of a previous cesarean delivery scar. This is because the pressure and stress of contractions weaken the scar tissue, causing it to tear open. Once the uterus ruptures, the fetus has nowhere to go but into the mother's abdomen. Hysterotomy scars, uterine perforation scars, and other uterine scars are the most common risk factor factors for uterine rupture. Labor obstruction, labor induction, breech position, multiple fetuses, recent deliveries, and large babies for gestational age can also contribute 
after uterine rupture. There are a variety of symptoms and signs that are associated with uterine rupture. Some possible symptoms that a mother will experience would include excessive vaginal bleeding, sudden pain between contractions, contractions that become slower or less intense, abnormal abdominal pain or soreness. Another one would be the recession of the baby's head into the birth canal. And another one is the bulging under the pubic bone and sudden pain at the site of a previous uterine scar. Loss of uterine muscle tone is also a symptom. Rapid heart rate, low blood pressure, and shock in the mother can also be a symptom of uterine rupture. Abnormal heart rate in the baby and failure of labor to progress naturally is also a symptom a uterine rupture can be a life-threatening complication of childbirth for both the mother and the baby so in the mother uterine ruptures can cause major blood loss or hemorrhage however Fetal bleeding due to uterine rupture is rare when, when it occurs in a hospital. Uterine ruptures are usually a much greater health concern for the baby. Once doctors have diagnosed that there is a uterine rupture, they must act quickly to pull the baby from the mother. If the baby isn't delivered within 10 to 40 minutes, it will die from a lack of oxygen. That's all. Good day everyone, I am Crystal Joy Pitao and I will be going to present the uterine rupture using Gordon's 11 functional health patterns in health perception, health management pattern, family's health is well, except her father have a high blood pressure. They do exercise and physical activities to stay healthy. They do not drink alcohol or use any tobacco products. The client have a regular prenatal checkups. They listen and follow any suggestions made by the physician. In nutritional metabolic pattern, family's typical daily food intake is three times a day, which are breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The family are healthy eaters. They consume vegetables and fruits. Family's typical daily fluid intake is 1,500 ml each family member per day. Anyone consider themselves normal weight. In elimination pattern, family's regular bowel elimination is four times a week. They do not have any difficulty or discomfort. Family's regular urinary elimination is five times a day or more depending on water consumption. There is no problems with control or discomfort. In activity exercise pattern, they do light to moderate exercise three times a week for about 45 minutes. In their spare time, they do some household chores and reading books. In sleep rest pattern, they are generally well rested and able to perform daily activities. The client had intermittent sleep but did not use aids to sleep. In cognitive perceptual pattern, they didn't have any difficulty in hearing others white spots in her vision that appeared to be floating, learned best at reading and didn't have difficulty in learning. In self-perception health concept pattern, the client does feel good about herself. The family felt lost hope sometimes. In roles relationship pattern, the client lived with her husband and children. She also belonged to social groups since she is a teacher. They interact with other organizations. In sexually reproductive pattern, during intercourse, they do not have problems. The client does not have menstrual cycle problems. Her last menstrual period was on May 17, 2022, Gravida 5 para 4. In coping stress tolerance pattern, no big changes in the past year. Her husband is the most helpful in taking things over and is frequently available does not use any medication, drugs, or alcohol in coping stress. In values, beliefs, pattern, they are Catholic and the religion is important in their family's life. It helps when they face with difficult situations. They usually go to church every Sunday. 
they have a plan not to have a children anymore. Hi, I'm Ajun Bipadayo. I'll be discussing a nursing care plan about uterine rupture. Name of patient, Sheila May R. Gonzalez, age 40 years old, civil status, married, address to lang itapi buhol. Assessment, subjective, maluya ko wala ko gibati nga paghilab sa akong tiyan as verbalized by the patient. Objective, temperature, 36.8 Celsius, blood pressure, 126 over 67 millimeters per mercury, pulse rate, 78 beats per minute. Respiratory rate, 19 beats per minute. Abdomen and uterus fills of 200 millimeters of vaginal bleeding. Change in CTG, sudden loss of contraction. Hematoria, easy palpation of fetal parts. Diagnosis. Rest for fetal distress secondary to uterine ruptures as evidenced by sudden loss of contraction. Plan of care. Short term objective. Within 30 minutes of intervention, the team must skillfully and continuously monitor fetal will be in throughout the pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Independent. First, assist level of consciousness of the mother. Second, assist the degree of fetal distress. Third, assist the need for the immediate delivery. Fourth, assist if HR note variability periodic changes and baseline rate every 5 to 15 minutes. Fifth, monitor fetal descent. In birth canal in relation to ischial is spines. 6. Note odor and color of amniotic fluid once. 7. Document prognosis and changes. 8. Provide client and, nine and family teaching. 9. Assist the client emotion and psychosocial needs. 10. Position mother in left lateral position regionally to determine what appropriate intervention should be given to be able to assist and provide the best care for the patient if the client is in active labor and bleeding cannot be stopped emergency cesarean delivery may be indicated detects abnormal responses which may in indicate hypoxia in order to determine potential dysfunctional labor the Fetus lie and position within the birth canal. This can rule out other potential complications such as meconium staining. This will help clarify and will evaluate the patient more, allows them to understand the situation, calms the client, and help her to take in stress. The evaluation. After 30 minutes of intervention, the team skillfully and continuously monitor fetal will be throughout the pregnancy. See and labor delivery. Good day, everyone. I am Vivian Lynn Pipito, and I am going to discuss the drug study for uterine rupture. So, the main treatment of uterine rupture is immediate laparotomy with cesarean delivery. In this case, I am going to discuss the drugs that are given to our patient during or after the hospitalization. For the pain treatment, the patient was given acetaminophen. And since the patient had an abnormal blood pressure at some point, the patient was given hydralazine. Let's start with acetaminophen. The drug classification of acetaminophen are non-narcotic, analgesic, and antipyretic. Its generic name is acetaminophen and brand names are Tylenol, Abinol, Vanadol, and etc. Its dosage is 500 mg per tab and its route is by mouth. The mechanism of action of acetaminophen is it produces analgesia by a known mechanism, but it is centrally acting in the central nervous system by increasing the pain threshold by inhibiting cyclooxygenase. It provides temporary analgesia for mild to moderate pain. In addition, acetaminophen lowers body temperature in individuals with a fever. The indication for this drug are fever reduction, temporary relief of mild to moderate pain, and generally a substitute for aspirin when the latter is not tolerated or is contraindicated. Furthermore, the contraindications of this drug is hypersensitivity to acetaminophen or phenacetin and use with alcohol. The adverse effect of this on the body as a whole are negligible with recommended dosage, rash, and acute poisoning like anorexia, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, lethargy, diaphoresis, chills, 
epigastric pain, and diarrhea. Moving forward, the nursing responsibilities regarding acetaminophen are as follows. First, administer acetaminophen with a full glass of water. The rationale for this is to avoid an upset stomach. Next is to routinely monitor the effectiveness of acetaminophen by assessing pain levels and fever reduction. This is to check if the administration of acetaminophen is effective in relieving the pain that the patient is experiencing. Another nursing responsibility is to instruct patients to never take more than 4,000 mg of acetaminophen per 24 hours. Overdose can be dangerous and potentially fatal, so it is important to follow the recommended dosage and not exceed the maximum daily dose. Lastly, advise the patient not to take acetaminophen with alcohol and not to take this drug longer than 10 days. Taking too much acetaminophen and mixing it with alcohol can potentially lead to liver damage. Let's move forward to the second drug, hydrolysin. Hydrolysin is a non-nitrite vasodilator antihypertensive. Its generic name is hydrolysin hydrochloride and brand names is R novohylazin and nihydrol. Its dosage is 20, 10 to 20 mg every 4 to 6 hours and IV as a route. The mechanism of action for this drug is it reduces blood pressure by direct effect on vascular smooth muscles of arterial resistance vessels, resulting in vasodilation. The indication of hydrolysin is most commonly in step care approach to treat moderate to severe hypertension. Also, an early malignant hypertension and resistant hypertension that persist after sympathectomy. Meanwhile, the contraindication are monotherapy for chronic heart failure, mitral valvular rheumatic heart disease, myocardial infarction, and tachycardia. The side effects are blur of vision, diarrhea, dizziness, drowsiness, headache, lightheadedness, loss of appetite, nausea, and vomiting. On the other hand, the adverse effect on the body as a whole is hypersensitivity, like rash, urticaria, pruritus, fever, and chills. Lastly, the nursing responsibilities with the administration of hydrolysin are as follows. First is to monitor the blood pressure and heart rate closely. This is to check for effectivity of the drug and to monitor the patient for possible hypotension. Next is to give the drug with food to increase absorption. Monitor the patient for adverse and allergic reactions to the medication. To recognize and have an immediate intervention to the problem that may occur. And lastly, evaluate patient understanding on drug therapy. This will help patients to determine whether a medication is working appropriately. So that is all about the drug study for uterine rupture case. Hello everyone! I am here to share the overall evaluation of our case study. Our patient's advanced maternal age, fourth pregnancy, external cephalic version to correct for bridge position, and sequential use of mesoprostol and oxytocin are all individual factors that could have led to her rupture. Although an exceedingly rare complication, her risk factors compounded each other and resulted in this unfavorable outcome. Heightened awareness, close supervision, and low threshold for intervention would enable obstetrical teams to achieve a better outcome when presented with a similar situation. With reference to home care and discharge instructions, the patient should be able to take care of the caesarean incision properly. Getting up and walking around once the patient is home will help heal faster and can help prevent blood clots. The patient should be able to do most of the regular activities in 4 to 8 weeks. The patient should also be advised to contact her care provider if she have a vaginal bleeding that is still very heavy after more than four days or is a slight but it lasts beyond four weeks or involves the passing of large clots. With regards to the diet recommendation, 
the patient should try eating smaller meals than normal and have a healthy snacks in between. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables and drink 8 cups or 2 liters of water a day to keep from getting constipated. So that is all. Thank you and God bless.